Hello everyone. Welcome to phase 3 of the Pico series tutorials made by Waveshare, PWM. Pulse width modulation, abbreviated as PWM in English, is a powerful scheme for simulating the change of the analog signal with the digital signal. Most signals in our life are analog signals, such as brightness, speed, volume, and so on. However, most analog circuits are complex with poor anti-interference ability. So the pulse width modulation technology came into being. By outputting pulses of different widths at a fixed frequency, the smoothly varying average voltage can be obtained to approximate the analog output. As the digital circuit plays an important role in our lives, PWM is more and more common. For example, the current energy-saving lamps are basically LED, and we can control the brightness of the lights by PWM. Commonly, our mobile phone chargers may also adopt PWM technology. Now we know what PWM is and PWM applications. Next, let's learn how RQ2040 realizes PWM output. First, let's take a look at the flowchart of PWM. The clock source outputs the clock signal to the frequency divider. The frequency divider divides the frequency according to its parameters. The signal obtained by the frequency divider is used as the clock source of the counter, which then counts again. The comparator then outputs the corresponding level by comparing the input value. You may not know much about dividers and counters, so let me explain them here. The frequency divider, as the name implies, is used to divide or down-convert the input signal. If the input frequency is 100 Hz and the parameter of the frequency divider is 10, the frequency of the signal output by the frequency divider is 10 Hz, and the counter is used to record the number of pulses of the input value. When each clock signal arrives, the counter value is added or subtracted by 1, which is restricted by the maximum count value. Now we have a general understanding of the flowchart of PWM. Let's see its internal block diagram. Next, we will explain it respectively. Okay, we now come to the first part of the PWM peripheral, the selection of the clock source. By default, the PWM channel is in free-running mode, where the clock source is the system clock. In addition to this, there are three modes. 1. When a high level is detected in pin B, the system clock is used as the clock source, and if its level is low, there is no clock source. 2. When the low level turns into the rising edge of the high level and is detected in pin B, a pulse will be sent and this pulse will be used as the clock source. 3. When the high level turns to the falling edge of the low level in pin B, a pulse will be sent and this pulse will be used as the clock source. Among them, mode 1 is the level trigger mode, mode 2 and mode 3 are edge trigger modes. These modes can be set in the div mode field of the CSR register of the PWM channel. In free running mode, pin A and B are both output pins. In any other mode, pin B turns into an input pin for controlling the counter. Output registers for pin B will be ignored. By allowing the PWM channel to run in the level triggered or edge triggered mode for a fixed amount of time, it can be used to measure the duty cycle or frequency of the input signal. Of course, it should be noted here that MicroPython can only be set to the default free running mode at this stage. We now come to the second part, the divider, each PWM channel has an independent fractional clock divider, and the divider parameters are stored in the DIV register. This is an 8-bit integer and 4-bit fractional clock divider that reduces the input frequency by a factor of about 256, which is actually 255 and 15 sixteenths. With simple derivation, the period formula of PWM and the frequency formula of PWM can be obtained, which will not be repeated here. Now we come to the third and fourth parts of PWM. As the flowchart explained above, we can learn that the output of PWM is realized by constantly comparing the value of the counter and the input value from the CC register. Next, we will explain what is the counter and comparator. If the current counter value is less than the value of the CC register, it will output a high level, otherwise, it will output a low level. The ratio of the entire cycle time occupied by the high level is called the duty cycle. The counting period is controlled by the top calculator. Since both the counter and the top calculator are 16 bits, the maximum cycle is 65, 536 cycles. The PWM counter by default counts up until it reaches the value of the top register, then resets to zero. 
The RP2040 also offers a phase correction mode where the counter starts counting down after it reaches the top, and doesn't start counting up again until it reaches zero again. So no matter how the duty cycle changes, the pulse is always centered at a certain point. Note that when the phase correction mode is on, the output frequency is halved. That's all for PWM theory, and now let's move on to the next part. Here is the object constructor function of PWM, whose function is to specify GPIO to reinitialize and set it as PWM output. The first parameter, pin, is the pin object that we have explained in the last phase, which is used to specify the GPIO to be used and the object is reinitialized. The adainit function is a deinitialization function, and its role is to clear the initialization and stop the PWM output. The frequency function is a PWM frequency setting function, which automatically calculates the divider parameters and top register parameters according to the parameter value. As mentioned above, the top register determines the maximum count value of the counter. The duty underscore U16 function is used to set the duty cycle, and the corresponding value is automatically calculated by the first parameter value and given to the CC register. When the counter value is less than the CC calculator, the PWM outputs a high level, otherwise, it outputs a low level. Duty underscore underscore NS function is to set the duration of a cycle to output a high level. Its parameter value is the high level duration in NS. Okay, as we have a general understanding of PWM related functions and objects, let's get into programming. Back to our favorite part, programming. Now let's see the program. As you can see in the previous two lines different from the GPIO program, we have added the PWM class so that we can use PWM. Next, we set GPIO25 as a PWM output with an output frequency of 1 kHz. Here we set LED underscore duty to 0 and LED underscore direction to 1. Then we add LED underscore duty to LED underscore direction in the loop and assign it back to LED underscore duty. If LED underscore duty is greater than or equal to 100, then the LED underscore direction is set to minus 1. If LED underscore duty is less than or equal to 0, LED underscore direction is set to 1. Then you can use the duty underscore u16 function to set the LED underscore duty to the duty cycle at a certain ratio, and output the value of the LED underscore duty when the LED underscore duty is divisible by 5. Here we have realized the PWM initial output duty cycle of 0% and increased to 100%, and then began to decrease to 0%, and then began to increase, and so on and so forth, so that we have finished the LED breathing light program. You may wonder why we should output the value of LED underscore duty in the program? In fact, it is here to use Thani's drawing function. Here we open Thani and click to run, then we can see the output of Pico on Thani's command line. Then we right click and select to display plotter, and then we can visually see the change in the output value of Pico. Here it is the end of phase 3. Hope you all like it, and see you next time.